All right, guys, we thought we'd just kind of walk up. Not happening. We're bear crawling. There's a lot of sitting down and taking breaks. Hi, we're Darren and Stephanie. In 2020, we traded our typical international travel for a new adventure at home, purchasing a 2020 Forest River R Pod 180 travel trailer. As complete newbies to the camping world, we took our little pod on a couple test weekends close to home in Indiana. We then set our sights on our first big trip from home. Hey guys, welcome to Empire, Michigan. The last time you heard from us, we were showing you our new travel trailer and we are on our first long haul adventure on the lower part of Michigan along the lake. We are up at the very top of the lower part of Michigan at Sleeping Bear Dunes National Lakeshore. Uh, yesterday we made an 11 hour drive. Supposed to be nine, it was 11. Supposed to be nine, turned out to be 11 hours from Evansville to Empire and we got into our campground late last night. We were just kind of really hoping to get somewhere for our vacation. We were supposed to be going to Georgia, Armenia, and Turkey in the next week or so, and obviously that has all been canceled. And so we started looking at the great outdoors here in the United States and where we could take our travel trailer. And we decided if we took a straight north shot, we would hit the very top of Michigan. And uh, there's a lot of outdoors there that uh, we have never explored before. So we're getting ready to head out on the Empire Bluffs Trail. It's just a trail along the lake shore here. It's a mile and a half or so, pretty short, but supposed to be pretty scenic. So we are going to take off and do that now. But before we do that, we had one little confession to make. Uh, last time we talked to you, we, we said we were going to try to pull this trailer with our Ford Edge, which was the car we'd had for five years or so. We didn't feel super comfortable after a couple test runs, and so we bought a truck. Um, so you probably will see that in the videos here a little bit. Um, I know we talked about it, so we just wanted to uh, confess that up front that we did trade vehicles. So we are invested in this new camping hobby uh, a little deeper than we expected to be a month in, but uh, we feel safer on the road, and so uh, we're better for it, we think. I think that our edge would have really struggled with this 11 hour trip and uh, with the truck we really didn't have too much to worry about. Anyways, now that that administrative news is behind us, let's go hiking. So it's Sunday morning here. Um, we didn't really have much of a plan for the day so we thought we'd check out this trail that we mentioned. It's actually the most popular trail in the park. It's only a mile and a half round trip, Steph thinks, and it's pretty busy. Um, it's supposed to be very, very scenic and kind of end up on the lake and so we'll show you a few shots along the way. Um, not sure how much talking we'll doing just because there's it, a lot of people around. It's crowded and uh, it's a little awkward shooting in the coronavirus times. So why come to Sleeping Bear Dunes National Lakeshore? Well, uh, there are these dramatic, like what, 100, 200 foot tall sand dunes that butt up right against Lake Michigan. And so you can see why this trail would be super popular for the park, because uh, it brings you out right on these like steep drop offs. Um, the trail itself, I think would be a little scary to do with a small child because uh, it looks like it's a long way down to the water here and uh, there's not much space. It's funny to think that this is actually a lake. I mean, I've been to Lake Michigan, especially from Chicago several times, and I've been up this side of the lakeshore before too. But like, if you look at the colors out here, it's just crazy. It's like that blue-green, like Caribbean Sea colors that you're used to. It just doesn't look like lake water. I mean, we've seen some mountain lakes and stuff that are glacier fed and they're crystal clear, but I mean, this is, this is not mountain fed. I mean, there's these sand dunes and bluffs and stuff, but it's just, it's just kind of unimaginable that the lake could be this color. Sleeping Bear Dunes National Lakeshore covers more than 30 miles of Lake Michigan coastline, maintained by the National Park Service. A week-long pass costs $25 and gives you access to the region's beaches and trails. One other thing to note is that camping has had a big boom right now and so has going to national parks. And we were a little concerned about coming here, whether or not it would be too crowded because Americans are just ready to get outdoors and uh, it's really the only kind of vacation you can take that's away from other people. Uh, the trail itself was a little crowded and we had a hard time booking a campsite. We were lucky to get one up here in Michigan, but it is not as bad as some of the reports we've heard from other national parks where there's trash everywhere and you can barely move. Um, the trail is just kind of narrow and so there's other groups coming and going. Uh, there are some things that are closed here in the park. There are two islands that are off the coast here. We think they're called the Manitou Islands, 
Uh, you can typically ride a ferry out to those islands and do some more hiking, but the dock has been closed um, due to some issues, I think some structural issues. But the outdoors are still open and uh, we're ready to go. One highlight for the park is the Pierce Stocking Scenic Drive, which winds you seven miles through the woods and history of the region, ending with the most incredible views and a dune reaching roughly 450 feet above the water. You can't tell really at all, but it is a very, very sharp drop off. I'm not coming after you if you fall. <laughs> This is so high and so steep that I can't see the bottom. You can actually go down to the bottom and climb your way back out. They said in the manual or in the, the local guide that the climb takes about two hours. I heard a couple people say that their daughters did it in like 20, 25 minutes, but still it's steep enough and slick enough with the sand that it is not an easy task. And there's a warning sign that says, if you do get to the bottom and you can't make it back up, it's a $3,000 rescue. Little did Dare know that peer pressure would soon send him down that dune. But first, we drove off to find more scenery Something special about you. and some activities to soak up the warm August day. Since we have plenty of sun this afternoon, we decided to head out and do some actual beach stuff. We come down to North Bar Beach and Lake. Uh, it's kind of connected by a little sandbar, but I've never been swimming in Lake Michigan. And uh, anytime I've ever been over towards like Chicago, it's been really, really cold. So I'm excited to see what the water feels like. Here are my toes. It's not too bad and there are a lot of people out actually swimming. So uh, here goes nothing. It's not that bad. We ended the afternoon with a lazy beach day, dipping our toes in the lake and watching the waves, followed up with a relaxing night at the campsite. The next morning, we met up with a couple friends, our neighbors, Eric and Beth, and made plans to give them a quick loop through the scenic drive before heading out on a few mile hike. The guys soon decided on something much more strenuous. Today, we are starting off a little crazy here. Darren and uh, his friend Eric decided that they wanted to climb the dune. <laughs> Stephanie, I went up to give her the keys. She's like, you don't have to do this. I was like, well, we're going to eat a bunch later, so we've got friends with us today. This is Eric. Say hi, Eric. Hey! We decided to go down and back up. The guy at the top says it should take us 20 minutes to get back up if we're in good shape. I guess we'll see if we're in good shape. It's kind of like walking downhill in snow. He said if your car keys are in your pocket to uh, make sure you hang on to them because people lose them every day. And now back up there. Okay, it's like 11.51 a.m. We're getting ready to make the climb back up. We will check in periodically and let you know how long this takes. Just remember, I am a 37-year-old male who's in mediocre shape. So judge accordingly based on your demographic and level of fitness. All right, guys, we thought we'd just kind of walk up. Not happening. We're bear crawling. It's only been like five minutes and we're not very far, so. I'm gonna put this away and trudge on. Uh, there's a lot of sitting down and taking breaks. So hopefully they can power through this. Okay, it's uh, 12 o'clock, so like 10 minutes in. Maybe a half the way, a third of the way. It kinda sucks, not gonna lie. Okay, back to digging. Darren! hard. It took me like 30 minutes. There were some spots where the sand was hard and you couldn't grip so you just put your foot down and slide back down. You did it! Good job! Woo! With all of our group safely surviving the dune climb, we headed out on our previously selected hike of the day at Sleeping Bear Point. Okay, so when we woke up this morning, our plan was to come out to Sleeping Bear Point and do about a two to three mile hike. So far, it's been all sand, which is great for the guys, uh, but it gives you a really good idea of kind of the grasses and some of the plants that you see in this area. I've been feeling so small, watched the clock ticking off the wall, but tonight I'm letting it go. 
spend my coin for show. Midway through the hike, you have these ghost trees, which were part of a forest that was then covered by a dune, and then the dune moves back out and leaves these weird looking petrified trees, which are apparently hundreds of years old. So apparently sand is a little tough on the skin. That's all the hide missing from my knuckles after the dune climb earlier this morning. Looks like I got in a fight. This trail is a little harder than I wanted it to be after climbing a thousand foot dune. But we're about halfway there. Stuff is bringing up the rear a little bit. Somebody's got to keep an eye on things from back there. I think I'm ready for lunch. One of the best bites to eat after a long hike is a regional favorite. This part of Michigan is famous for its cherries, and you can get all the cherries your heart desires in the form of ciders, sandwiches, candy, and more at Cherry Republic in Glen Arbor. That evening, Darren and Eric used the cool waters at Empire Beach to soak their sore muscles. Hard no. So uh, I was able to get in and, uh, and rest my bones a little bit in there, and it, it did feel pretty good once I got past uh, the, uh, the shock of getting in. Um, after that, we kind of sat and watched the sun start to set, but sunsets are pretty long up here. The sun was low in the sky for a couple hours and didn't really make much progress, so we decided to head back to camp and call it a night. The next day would bring us to even more amazing Michigan water. Good morning, we are outside of Honor, Michigan, which is about 20 minutes south from where we are camping. And we are getting ready to take in another outdoor experience. We are going to head out on the Platte River and do some kayaking. Yeah, it shouldn't be too adventurous of a trip, a couple hours maybe, and I think the river moves pretty slowly and is pretty shallow. Um, but it should be a nice leisurely way to start our morning, so we're looking forward to it. We have made it into the river. We took about a five minute drive down. They brought our kayaks down and we are in. And we're off. Hello. The water is also super, super clear. You can see all the way to the bottom. It is super peaceful out here. I don't think that's always the case, but here in late August on a Tuesday, we were one of just three people who are taking a tour at 10 a.m. Uh, from our company. And there's a heron flying by as we speak. <clears throat> so uh, yeah, it's, it's really nice. We chose the calm and slow Lower Platte River to fit my physical abilities. Since my health severely limits my arms for paddling, we searched for a river where Darren could paddle for the both of us. It's been almost absurdly peaceful. Um, our friend said it almost didn't seem like real, like it seemed like kind of like a river experience that you'd see at an aquarium. But we are coming out on to, I believe it's called Loon Lake which we'll have to travel through a little bit. The Lower Platte River runs all the way into Lake Michigan, although you'll get out just before the last turn. It's the perfect fish environment, making it a popular spot for salmon fishing. One tiny, tiny issue with coming out here in late August is they kind of have like a fish dam that's here and it's open during the mid part of summer. So you can just kind of go through the center of it. But we are here at the end of August and apparently in August and September, you have to get out and kind of portage around it. Okie doke, so we are at the portage where you have to go around, um, but we think we're gonna get in the water here and see how it is. Still super, super clear. Oh, it's a, it's a wee bit cold, but Darren's already out there. Ah, super clear water that now feels pretty warm. But I did see a snake over where Beth was and almost stepped on it, so not okay with that. I've been doing some research on snakes since I almost stepped on a snake. The first thing I Googled said it was a rattlesnake and I was terrified because it wasn't it was, a rattlesnake. I don't think it was a rattlesnake. It was probably a garter snake. <laughs> but Google will get you. 
when you Google and the first thing says it's the only poisonous snake in Michigan is a rattlesnake. It's like but. snake MD. The worst symptom is the one they show first. <laughs> yeah. We think it was a garter snake, non-venomous. It looked pretty scared of me. I didn't hear any rattles. The portage is located about halfway down the lower plat run and we floated and splashed as more people slowly joined the final stretch. Once we dropped the kayaks, we walked down to Lake Michigan for another breathtaking beach that feels like it should be about a thousand miles south. Then the water that is in Lake Michigan is looking like this teal blue water that you would see, you know, down in the Caribbean. I don't know, it's just not what I would expect to find here in Michigan. That's not what I think of when I think of Michigan. But this is Michigan and this is what it looks like. If you're looking for a more relaxing day, the Leelanau Peninsula offers several scenic options. You can make a whole day of driving up to the very point of what, if you look at Michigan like a mitten, there's a little pinky that sticks out. That's the Leelanau Peninsula. And uh, we are now in the town of Northport after making a stop at a farm earlier. It's a nice mild day. I'm in jeans, which is un, uh, not a, a normal thing for me. Usually I'm pretty warm natured, so it's a nice cool day. This area is home to more wineries than anyone could visit in a weekend. But if wine isn't your thing, you can also eat your way around the peninsula. There are also items like cheese here at the Leelanau Cheese uh, Factory. It's a little weird, you know, during the pandemic, a lot of tasting rooms are kind of closed and here, like on their website, they typically talk about having raclette, which is like the Swiss melting cheese raclette tastings, but you can't really go inside right now. So we just purchased a small block of raclette to eat on the road as we travel around the peninsula. After we said goodbye to our friends, we decided to take a road trip even farther north. Hello friends. Sorry about the wave noise in the background. We are standing on the shores of Mackinac Island today. Mackinac Island is located about two hours from Sleeping Bear Dunes, but we chose a slightly slower route that took us along Michigan's western lakeshore. We did a drive called the Tunnel of Trees, which goes along Lake Michigan. A really nice drive, slow drive. Uh, it's a non-divided highway. We followed the Tunnel of Trees for about 20 miles before cutting over to Mackinac City. That's one of the two cities where you can catch the ferry across. Yeah, we had aspirations of driving all the way up to the UP to, that's Upper Peninsula, to Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore. That was gonna be about a four and a half hour drive. And then we had a hike that we wanted to do that we think was gonna take another five or six hours. So we decided to uh, cut it in half and come to Mackinac instead. Mackinac Island has been a vacation destination since Victorian times. And it still brings in a lot of visitors along with some of the higher tourist prices. For example, the 15 minute ferry ride will set you back $30 per person round trip. There are no motorized vehicles here and there haven't been any allowed for more than 100 years. So the only way to get around is by foot, by horse or by bicycle. And there are tons of horses and tons of bicycles here. We're about to do something we think that might be a little crazy. I have not ridden a bicycle in a while and because of my injuries we've been a little scared that I might not be able to handle riding a bicycle. But once we got over to the island we saw that there were people riding tricycles and that tricycles were available to rent. And so I kind of tried one out a little while ago and we think that I might be able to do it. So the best way to get around the island is probably bicycle and we think that we're going to try to get me on a tricycle and see if we can do this. Once we hopped on our bikes and left the bustling port area, we soon discovered the island's natural beauty. I just want to say that traveling during the coronavirus makes things a little weird. Darren and I were never big crowds people. We typically like to get away from crowds, but now it's even more than that, that you don't want to stand in a crowd of people. And when you come to things like this that are really, really beautiful, we just stopped at the Arch Rock, which is one of the highlights of Mackinac Island. There's a lot of people there and they want to take pictures and uh, there's a lot of, you know, wanting to take pictures without masks. You just kind of have to take things slow, give people space. The Outer Island Loop stretches eight miles and has no shortage of scenic points and turnoffs to more historic sites. Cause you're my sweetheart. this easy ride, we began to really feel like Mackinac Island was worth the hype. It was sad to leave and catch the ferry back, knowing there was so much more of the island we didn't have time to see. 
Mackinac Island really surprised us. I think we liked it a lot more than we thought we were. In my mind, I was envisioning like Michigan Disney World and just a lot of crowds and a lot of kind of touristy things. But once you get out of that like little stretch right where you get off the ferry, there's a lot of natural scenery and um, I think there'll be a lot to explore uh, for a long weekend. I was really excited because I haven't been able to ride a bicycle in probably six years or so. And uh, we weren't sure what I was going to be able to do on the island, how far I'd be able to walk, uh, knowing that I can't ride a bicycle. But once we got there, we saw that you could rent a tricycle. And they really had a lot of different bike rentals that you could do to fit dogs, kids, whatever you needed. And I don't know if you can hear us over the waves passion behind us. It has suddenly gotten very loud, I'm going to assume, from some boat that came by. But after visiting Mackinac, we decided to make a drive across the Mackinac Bridge to the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, and we are in the town of St. Ignace, which is also on the Straits of Mackinac, and uh, really kind of a cute, we said it kind of feels like a Western like town. a frontier town or something, yeah. But there was one thing that we wanted to do, and that was to eat a pasty. Yeah, you may have heard of pasties from like Cornwall, a Cornish pasty. Uh, their home is in the UK. That's at least where I had heard of them. It, it's kind of like a, a hand pie with meat and potatoes in it. Um, so think like a pot roast wrapped up in a pie crust. Uh, it's kind of how it tasted it and, and uh, felt to me. So Apparently that is a food item that is really popular in the Upper Peninsula and there are shacks all over the place that sell these. We came to Lido's. Yeah, I have to think it's probably traditionally a winter food. It's very hearty and, and filling. So something you'd want in the cold weather to keep you warm. We ate it into summer and it was still pretty tasty though, so. After our two hour drive back to Empire, we settled into our camper while Darren tried to make a quick fix to our AC. But more on that later. Does it look wobbly? We used our last days at Sleeping Bear Dunes to fit in a couple more hikes. This time checking out historic homesteads and of course more towering dunes. We spent our final afternoon soaking up every bit of camp life and working on some camper problems before a long trip home. We've enjoyed our first big trip with the R-Pod. We've had a couple issues, but overall it's been great to kind of be here at this campsite, which is called Indigo Bluffs. It's been a really nice place to stay with full hookups. So it is about three miles from Empire, Michigan. So you're at the center of the action. I think that we are really gonna be into this lifestyle. It's been very relaxing. It's nice to know that you have a place that's yours to come back to. It's nice to just spend all the time outside and in nature. Yeah, we've got a few kinks to work out here with the, this first big trip, but it's been a nice test. Uh, we've got a couple issues with the camper that we think may be caused just from it bouncing down the highway a little bit. So we're trying to find ways to, to better weight it and to make sure that the tires are properly inflated to minimize that as much as possible so we don't continue to have issues from things kind of rattling out of place. Um, our air conditioner is kind of banging and clanging um, from something kind of getting off kilter. We tried to fix it with the toolkit that we have, but we've struck out. So. Um, everything should be under warranty since it's new, so we're hoping that our dealer comes through and works with us to get things fixed up so we can get back out on the road. Yeah, we are hoping to camp a few more times before the end of the season. Um, it's a little bit warmer down in Indiana, so we might be able to fit some, some camping trips in in September, October. But if you have the time, I would highly suggest Michigan. We love that everyone seems so geared toward this outdoor lifestyle, and I think that's something that uh, we hope to see more of in the future. If you have any questions, if you're considering a uh, travel trailer purchase or rental or anything like that, we are pretty new. Um, so we'll happily answer your noob questions with noob answers. Um, as we've st started to learn things, maybe we can offer a good perspective. Definitely not a great experienced perspective, but uh, maybe some things that you have questions about as a new camper or potentially new camper we can help you out with. So feel free to ask those down in the comments. We're not really sure what our next video is gonna be. We might look into talking just kind of about what it takes to get started camping and just kind of some of the expenses that we face so far and just some of the hurdles to get us to where we are today. Um, there are a lot of surprises along the way, but uh, we are, feel like we're in a pretty good place right now. So we might do a video that goes more in depth with that. But if you would like to see that video, uh, keep watching and we hope to share that with you soon. See ya.